Hi there, Steve Kaufman here uh, to talk about language learning. And uh, of course, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. So today I want to talk about something that we hear quite a lot uh, when people talk about language learning, and that is, you know, use it or lose it. And people are afraid sometimes that if they, you know, for whatever reason, have to discontinue uh, learning a language or if they go away from a language for a long period of time, somehow they will lose their ability in that language. Um, basically, I don't subscribe to this use it or lose it theory. So I, I'm going to approach this from various points of view. Uh, first of all, uh, many languages I learned basically without speaking for the longest time. So to me, the using of a language includes listening and reading because that still is using the language. You're using the language to understand things. You're listening to it. You're engaging with words in the language. So very much listening and reading or writing, uh, obviously are forms of using the language just as speaking is a form of using the language. And uh, people often ask me, how do you refresh in a language that you learned previously? Well, I get busy listening and reading. So that's point number one. So the, the using in use it or lose it has to include listening and reading. Things that you can do whenever you want. And in fact, you can go back to some of the lessons. For example, and so let me move on to the point number two. Point number two is when it comes to speaking in the language, you are going to get rusty if you don't use it. However, you can very quickly recover you know, the level that you had before. So, for example, I'll give you some examples. I was in Bratislava, you know, whenever it was, um, like a year and a half ago, and in the lead up to Bratislava, I put a lot of effort into learning uh, Slovak, Slovakia. And it kind of pushed my Ukrainian out of the way. So that when I was in Bratislava at the meeting, I, I, I would meet this Ukrainian person I essentially couldn't say anything in Ukrainian, even though I had accumulated a very large vocabulary and had read books and listened to audiobooks on Ukrainian history and so forth and so on. I couldn't say anything. But from Bratislava, I went to Lviv, Ukraine, where I had arranged these sessions with this excellent teacher, Solomia, who works at the Ukrainian Language and Culture Center or school in Lviv, which I hardly recommend. And from the very first session, once we had three hours of, you know, the ability to talk, my Ukrainian came back. I was no longer trying to, you know, work on Slovakian and so forth and so on. So the point is that you get rusty initially, but you very quickly can reactivate what you had, especially if you prepare yourself for the reactivation by doing a lot of listening and reading. So that's the second point. So point number one is that listening and reading is part of using. Point number two is that your speaking will suffer a bit, but it'll activate very quickly. And it'll activate more quickly if you spend that effort at reactivating it by using it in your listening and reading. Another example I often use is if I have to, I have sometimes been asked to appear on say Mandarin Chinese television in Vancouver, and to prepare for that, I will listen and read a lot in Chinese. I won't speak much, but then when I get to the television studio, I have kind of refreshed it. So listening and reading is a great way to ref refresh your language. Okay, the third point is, not only do I not notice uh, any real slippage in the language if I go away from it, uh, but in some cases, it actually improves. And I'll give you a number of examples. Uh, right now, uh, because we had visitors here for a week, I wasn't able to do any Arabic at all. But then when I start up my Arabic listening again, I find that I hear it better. In other words, there was a period there, a week of call it benign neglect. And it's good for the brain. It's, it's, sometimes you're pushing too hard and the brain is resisting because it's it's kind of you're forcing sort of this new language and whereas if you leave it alone for a while i find that there's almost like a gestation as long as you put a 
You put a loaf of bread in the oven to bake, like it seems to get better. And so I noticed that with my uh, Arabic, I hear it more clearly now having left it for a week. But that's, you know, on, on the basis that I've worked, you know, every day I've been listening to Arabic and then I leave it for a week and I come back to it and I hear it better. And I have noticed this before, for example, I've mentioned that, for example, I was listening to these Chinese stories, uh, CDs that I have at home. And then I went through a period of very intensive Swedish study because I was going to be going to Sweden. So I'm listening to Hermann Lindqvist, uh, you know, history of Sweden and a whole bunch of stuff reading in Swedish that I was in Sweden. And then I come back and I listen to those Chinese CDs. I understand them better. So whether that's because learning this other language made my brain more observant of the language or because the, the, the language simply just stated in the background, but this period of benign neglect actually made my Chinese better. So I am never afraid that it, for example, right now my Greek, I couldn't probably say anything in Greek, but if I, however, I do follow some people in uh, Greek on Twitter. And when I read those little uh, tweets, I'm very happy that I'm able to read them. There's missing words, but I can read Greek. If I went back to listening and reading in Greek, I would very quickly come back to where I was. So I'm not at all concerned. And I don't think people should be concerned uh, if they have to leave the language for a short while or if they want to go and learn another language and then come back to that first language again. This use it and or lose it really doesn't apply, although there are sort of initial, an initial period of rustiness. And that initial period of rustiness will be, you know, how long that period of rustiness is will depend on how well you know that language, how much time you had previously put into that language. I mean, those languages that I speak very well, I don't lose them at all. But those languages that I speak less well, there is this rustiness and there is this requirement for a, a sort of a reactivation. But I don't lose anything. Uh, one other thing, final thing, someone asked me to talk about sentence mining as a learning technique. And I don't know much about it. I haven't done it. I'd be interested in comments from others. Uh, my feeling always has been that the fundamental structures of the language are contained in phrases. And so that if, if I tend to focus on phrases that capture the main structures of the language and also vocabulary words, I have tended to find that sentences are too unique. Each sentence is unique. Phrases repeat, words repeat, sentences are unique. So, uh, you know, when I study uh, on link in sentence mode, which at the present time exists in the web version, in other words, on, on the internet, whether you're using your uh, iPad or, or your computer, and it exists in the sort of beta version of the app for the iOS, it will soon be available for everyone. But so as I look at these individual sentences, as I'm learning my Arabic sentence by sentence, there's too much specific stuff in each sentence. It might be the name of a person, it might be a specific situation that's specific to whatever that sentence is describing. So my preference when I'm working at Link is to save phrases, phrases that capture some of the structures, the patterns that I find useful. So that's my take on it. Uh, I'd be interested to hear from others. Uh, you know, when we're learning, do we learn just words? Or do we learn phrases, phrases and words, phrases, words, sentences? What is it that you focus on learning? So there you have it. My take on use it uh, or lose it, which I think is a, a, not a meaningful motto. And again, I look forward to your comments.